Wow, Patrick Alvin is absolutely ruthless. The Vancouver Canucks have announced today... Uh, okay, how many is that? Four, eight, twelve, thirteen different players on the squad have gotten sent down. Take a look at this roster update. The following drivers will be sent to the realms. Okay, wait, never mind. The following players have been placed on waivers for the purpose of assignment to the AHL. You have Phil DiGiuseppe, Nate Smith, Christian Malanen, and Yuri Patera. The following players have been assigned to Abbotsford without waivers, so they just got sent down normally. Linus Carlson, Jonathan LeCaramaki, Ty Mueller, Max Sasson, Christian Felton, Cole McWard, Kirill Kudryadsev, Elias Pedersen. Oh my gosh, the Canucks sent Pedersen to Abbotsford. Oh my god. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Pedersen got sent down to Abbotsford, and Nikita Tolopilo also got sent down too. So the Vancouver Canucks have torched a lot of their preseason roster here, which means we have a good idea as to whom it is might actually be capable of winning a spot, and this gives us a clear picture as to what the Canucks roster is going to look like just in general. Before we dive over to the main team, let's talk about the guys that got sent down. So, the AHL waiver guys, Phil DiGiuseppe, Smith, Willan, and Patera. I don't think the Canucks have to worry too badly about other teams in the NHL claiming one of Patera, Nate Smith... Willannon or Phil DiGiuseppe, because if you go over to the waiver wire just in general, there were so many names put out there on waivers today. I mean, there were 28 players from Buffalo, Edmonton, New York, Seattle, Vancouver, lots of guys to be claimed on waivers. And based off of the action we've seen lately, we know that probably none of these guys are going to get claimed. They just have to get sent down and put on waivers as a formality. The rest of the NHL's rosters are already set in stone here. But Phil DiGiuseppe, always a nice, versatile option to be given a role. I thought he actually did play pretty all right in the preseason, considering the circumstances, but Phil DiGiuseppe was never going to be a full 82-game roster guy, assuming the Canucks were fully healthy. That's not all too surprising. Nate Smith had a pretty reasonably nice showcase towards the end of the preseason. He had scored the goal against the Oilers the other night, too, so nice to see that out of him, but of course, I don't think anybody was really expecting Nate Smith to challenge for a spot. Christian Milanen was a guy that played very well in the AHL the past few years. His offensive productivity in the American Hockey League has been stellar, but he was never good enough to put it all together at the NHL level. While he did have a few good showcases, I'd say, throughout the preseason, he had set up the one tic-tac-toe goal to Ratu, Hoaglander, and Linus Carlson on that one power play earlier in the preseason. But other than that, Christian Milanen didn't really stand out to me as being too much of a needle mover, although he does have some value, I'd say. He's going to be a good AHL guy, hopefully somebody who helps Jet Wu and Elias Pedersen and the other Canucks defenseman prospects they have kind of grow their games a little bit more. Yuri Patera, I feel like he's going to get sent down, but he's probably going to get called back up a little bit as the year goes on if you assume the injuries are going to keep on happening to the Vancouver Canucks. Right now, the Canucks' two goalies are Artur Shilovs and Kevin Lankinen. So there isn't really a need for Patera right now, especially when Thatcher Demko comes back. I think it's already been talked about here on the channel that the Canucks' plan is to go out there with three goaltenders in their rotation. But as we had seen with last year's playoff run, sometimes you might need to take your AHL guys and put them in the NHL. The Canucks did have some games against the Predators where Artur Shilovs was playing and the backup was Nikita Tolopilo. So... Yeah, definitely not ideal for the Canucks at that time, but it just goes to show you that sometimes these guys will need to be called up. So for Yuri Patera, I don't think this will be the last we have seen out of him in Vancouver, but he's going to be in Abbotsford. He's probably going to clear waivers. If he gets claimed, then okay, I'm going to get really surprised about that. Meanwhile, talking about the guys that have been assigned to Abbotsford, the two Swedes at the top there, Linus Carlson and Jonathan Lekaramaki, they both played very well, I would say. Lekaramaki was more surprising than Carlson. However, Lekaramaki was always going to have a really difficult time making the team. He doesn't need waivers to get assigned to Abbotsford. He still needs that first pro year in North America under his belt before I think the Canucks are really confident in giving him an NHL roster spot. We had seen that he did play well, though, with NHL guys against NHL competition, especially in the game against Edmonton yesterday. 
So, Lakaramaki, there's a lot of good things to like out of his game. Linus Carlson, I feel like, is right at the cusp there as one of the first call-ups for Vancouver should injuries start to strike again. Ty Mueller has a really good shot. I actually did like him in the preseason, although I understand that he's not really somebody that many people were penciling in to have a role with the Vancouver Canucks this upcoming year. Same thing could be said about Max Sasson. Impressive, but maybe not the best. Then on defense, you got four defenders, Felton, McWard, Kudriad, Seven, Elias Pettersson. Felton, I honestly didn't really notice him too much throughout the preseason. Cole McWard, I thought, had some moments, but didn't really stand out too much. Kirill Kudryadsev had the shot that led to the Smith goal yesterday against the Oilers, so obviously there is value with that offensive capability. And then you have yourselves the Ilias Pedersen clone. He actually wasn't that great in the preseason, unfortunately. And I actually was kind of disappointed to see that out of him. I thought that he could have been a lot better, but, you know, an extra season in the AHL is not going to hurt anybody. So hopefully Pedersen is able to stabilize himself then. You got to remember, too, Pedersen was a third round guy. Like, that's not bad in the slightest. The fact that he was on the NHL roster for this long and he did look as competent at times as he did. I think he was a little bit shaky at times, but he was a third round guy, so it's not really all too dire. Then you have Nikita Tolapilo who was sent down. I mean, yeah, Tolapilo. We all thought that he was going to be in Abbotsford anyway. This opens the door to other guys to have placed themselves in the regular Vancouver Canucks lineup. If you go over to Brendan Batchelor's Tuesday Canucks practice lines, the lines go as follows here. Danton Heinen, Miller Besser, DeBrusque, Pedersen, Sprong, Hoglander, Bluger, Garland, Baines, Oman, Sherwood, Atu Ratu as the extra two. Then you have Hughes, Hronick, Susie Myers, Forward, Deherne, Friedman, Juleson. The decor is exactly what we thought it would be. Friedman and Juleson as the extras, while Hughes, Hronick, Susie Myers, Forward, and Deherne do their thing. But for forwards, the fact that Dakota Joshua is injured opens the door for at least one other guy to be placed in the roster that we probably didn't think would be. And I think for right now, those three names are Oman, Baines, and Ratu. Now, you actually might be thinking about it. There's actually another name that is missing here. You had Pia Suter, who was absent from today's practice. So he is not included in the roster. But if you have Suter inserted here as a fourth line center, for example, you have Baines and Ratu and Oman rounding themselves out as the extra guy. This is awesome to see for Atu Ratu, the fact that he was good enough in the team's eyes to have been given such an extended look and be placed amongst the team's final cuts. Arshdi Baines, of course, scored the goal yesterday against the Oilers. He looked really good in the preseason, much better, I would say, than he did earlier last season. He definitely improved and was able to round out his NHL instincts a little bit more. But once the Canucks are fully up and ready to go, you probably see Oman, Baines, or Ratu, all of whom get removed from the regular top 12 forwards because Suter and Joshua are going to come back and take over those roster spots. If Hoglander's on the third line with Suter and Sherwood and you have Bluger, Garland, and Joshua together, that kind of looks about right, right? Meanwhile, for Ratu, Baines, and Oman, at the very least, they're getting NHL-caliber practices, they're playing with NHL guys, maybe they get a few games here and there, you know, not every Kanaka is going to play 82, there are going to be some injuries here, so hopefully for Baines, Oman, and Ratu, this spells good things for their development. Oman especially, I didn't really think that he had it in him to compete as much as he has been for a roster spot, but the fact that he was pretty much a main Kanak for a good chunk of the past few years, maybe should have had me a little bit more optimistic about him and his chances to force a spot this year. Either way, though, Niels Oman, pretty good pickup for the Vancouver Canucks in free agency. I don't know if the Canucks have enough room to play him for a significant amount of time like they did the previous two years, but he's there. Ratu, Baines, you like to see it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Patrick Alvin's ruthless cuts. Okay, maybe it's not too ruthless considering we all kind of recognize that this was going to happen inevitably. It all just came so quickly on Tuesday, after a preseason game where the Canucks iced out one of their worst and youngest rosters to date. So, thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Baines and Ratu still being on the team at this point? What are your thoughts on all the guys that got sent down? And do you think to Giuseppe Smith... Patera or Milan and have a chance of getting claimed. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Roll 99. And bye. <laughs>